Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 16th of May. Indian Prime Minister Modi visits Lord Buddha's birthplace in Nepal, meets Nepali counterpart Deoba. Locals in Gilgit Baltistan raise concern over melting glaciers, poor infrastructure. And Sri Lankan drivers hunt for fuel as stocks run short amid economic crisis. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday visited the birthplace of Lord Buddha in Nepal's Lumbini on the occasion of the birth anniversary of the founder of Buddhism and also met his Nepalese counterpart, Sher Bahadur Diyoba, to strengthen bilateral ties. After their talks, the two sides signed six agreements on cooperation in areas including culture and education sector. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday visited the birthplace of Lord Buddha in Nepal's Lumbini, along with his Nepali counterpart Sher Bahadur Deoba on the occasion of Buddha Purnima, the birth anniversary of the founder of Buddhism. The two leaders took part in special prayers at the Mahadevi temple, the site where Buddha was born, and also watered the Bodhi tree sapling from Bodh Gaya, which was gifted by Modi in 2014. They also laid the foundation stone for a center for Buddhist culture and heritage in the Lumbini monastic zone. The two leaders later held bilateral talks and witnessed exchange of six agreements on cooperation in areas including culture and education sector. Modi during an event to mark Buddha Purnima said, India and Nepal relations are unshakable like the Himalayas and will benefit entire humanity in emerging global situation. Jis tarah ki vaishwik parishitya ban rahi hai, usme Bharat aur Nepal ki nirantar majbuti hoti mitrata, hamari ganishtata, sampoorna manavta ke hit ka kaam karegi. The one-day visit was Modi's first after a 2020 border row. The ties were put back on track when Deoba visited India last month. And life is laborious and hard enough for construction workers and slum dwellers in parts of India and Pakistan. But an unprecedented heat wave and record high temperatures this year have made it even more unbearable for them. Scientists have said more than a billion people were in some way at risk from the extreme heat in the South Asian region. As India grapples with an unprecedented heat wave, the country's vast majority of poor construction workers and slum dwellers who generally work outdoors are vulnerable to the scorching temperatures. Laborers at the construction site on the outskirts of capital New Delhi said they scale up walls, lay concrete and carry heavy loads using racked scraps as protection against the sun, but record high temperature hovering past 40 degrees Celsius often cause them to fall sick. That in turn means they lose income. ये सब दिक्कत है गर्मी है बहुत ज़्यादा बढ़ गया है तो क्या करें काम नहीं करेंगे तो खाएंगे भी नहीं और थोड़ा दिन काम करते हैं थोड़ा दिन बैठना पड़ता है अभी गर्मी के वजह से बात यही है सर Meanwhile, outdoor workers in parts of Pakistan also express they are facing a similar ordeal as a heat wave remains unabated. Pakistan's Federal Minister for Climate Change, Sherry Rahman, said last month that for the first time in decades, Pakistan had gone from winter to summer without the spring season. In Pakistan's Karachi city, known for moderate climate, the temperature climbed as high as 42 degrees Celsius over the past weekend coupled with power cuts. Scientists have linked the early onset of an intense summer to climate change and say more than a billion people in India and neighboring Pakistan were in some way at risk from the extreme heat. 
And news from Pakistan, PMLN Vice President Maryam Nawaz on Sunday lashed out at ousted Premier and PDI Chairman Imran Khan and said his performance remained a zero during his tenure and now the game is over for him. She also slammed Khan for making claims that a conspiracy is being hatched to assassinate him. Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, PMLN Vice President Maryam Nawaz on Sunday said, Former Premier and PTI Chairman Imran Khan's performance has remained zero during his three and a half years government and now the game is over for him. Addressing a rally in Pakistan's Gujarat district, Maryam said that the PTI chief would fail if he tried to shift the burden of his poor economic performance to the PMLN. Responding to startling claims by Khan that a conspiracy to assassinate him was being hatched, Mariam said that he was making such claims after his foreign conspiracy narrative failed to get traction. She, however, urged Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah to launch an immediate probe into the matter. Khan Saab, you say that you have kept a video record in which you have told me that who is in your killing of your death. So Khan Saab, Allah do not do it. हम अपने बदतरीन दुश्मन के लिए भी मौत की दुआ नहीं करते अल्लाह करे अल्लाह करे कि तुम जिंदा रहो और नवाज शरीफ की कामयाबियां देखो इमरान खान मेड द क्लेम्स ड्यूरिंग अ पब्लिक रैली ऑन सैटरडे ही आल्सो वंस अगेन एड एलिगेशंस दैट द यूएस अलोंग विद द लीडर्स ऑफ इनकमबेंट गवर्नमेंट conspired to oust him as premier. The PTI chairman has demanded snap elections and is scheduled to hold a long march rally to Islamabad later this month. And moving on, the rapid melting of glaciers in Gilgit Baltistan has become a cause of worry among the locals as rising water levels in the rivers flowing through the region pose a threat to life and property. Locals have blamed the Pakistani authorities have continued to ignore the situation with no proper policy in place to curb deforestation and no infrastructure to mitigate the effects. With the increase in temperatures due to unprecedented heat wave, the glaciers in Gilgit Baltistan have started melting, leading to significant rise in the water levels of rivers and streams. As a result, the threat of floods looms large and has created panic among the people in the illegally occupied region. Locals have blamed the Pakistani authorities have continued to ignore the situation. Earlier this month, a bridge in Gilgit Baltistan's Hunza Valley also collapsed after a glacial lake outburst. Reports suggest rapidly melting glaciers have created more than 3,000 glacial lakes in the region and 33 could burst soon, sending torrents of water coursing through streams. If I Gilgit Baltistan, तो यहाँ पे जो हमारे रोड का निजाम है बड़ा दहम बरहम है इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बड़ा ना होने के बराबर है रोड के ऊपर और उसके साथ साथ क्लेशर पिघलते जा रहे हैं क्योंकि गर्मी का जो फोर होता है जून जुलाई अगस्त में तो इसमें जहाँ हमारे क्लेशर्स हैं वो पिघल के दारियाँ में पानी का बहाव ज़्यादा होता है क्योंकि एक तो डिस्ट्रिक्ट गजर की हम बात करें तो दारियाँ जो हमारा है वो बिल्कुल रोड के साथ साथ है तो वो रोड को मतलब कटाव करके ले चला जाता है with no proper policy in place to curb deforestation and infrastructure to mitigate the effects of natural calamities, locals have to brace the hazardous consequences. They blame successive governments have paid little attention to their pressing problems over the years. And in news from Sri Lanka, hundreds of auto rickshaw drivers desperate for fuel queued outside petrol stations in Sri Lanka's Colombo city on Monday, a day after a diesel shipment using an Indian credit line arrived in the crisis-hit country. Meanwhile, protests have continued and abated to demand President Gotabaya Rajpaksa to step down over his failure to manage the economy. Desperate auto rickshaw drivers formed lengthy queues outside petrol stations in Sri Lankan capital Colombo on Monday, a day after a diesel shipment using an Indian credit line arrived in crisis hit island nation. The distribution was yet to start, reports suggested until afternoon. However, drivers ignored a plea by the country's new prime minister to not join queues that have galvanized weeks of anti-government protests over the worst economic crisis. 
Armed police stood guard at several petrol stations as people waited impatiently for the supplies to turn up. Petrol नहीं तो कैसा चलेगा? पूरा गाड़ी भी इधर भी कुछ काम कुछ नहीं है हम लोग का काम ये काम है ना बराबर एक काम है दूसरा कुछ काम नहीं अभी काम कुछ नहीं है हम लोग सात बजे आठ बजे ऐसा टाइम में सर इधर आए अभी तक वो पेट्रोल है नहीं है वो बोलता आएगा नहीं आएगा Protests over the economic crisis have continued unabated despite President Gotabaya Rajapaksa appointing opposition parliamentarian Ranil Vikramasinghe as the new PM after his elder brother Mahinda Rajapaksa resigned last week after fighting between government supporters and protesters killed nine people. The protesters have insisted the president should step down who they say is ultimately responsible for rampant inflation and shortages of fuel and other essentials. And despite the availability of various mediums of entertainment and leisure, people in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir still relish watching theatre plays. Kashmir has a rich cultural and traditional history and theatre plays tremendous role for its promotion. Despite modernisation, several people in Srinagar district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir enjoy theatre plays in the territory. They believe that theatre has its own importance as per the cultural and traditional point of view. Jammu and Kashmir has a rich cultural and traditional history and theatre plays tremendous role for its promotion. Kashmiris like to watch the live theatre performances as it promotes a connection and understanding of their culture in a broader sense, instead of different mediums of entertainment and leisure. Artists, writers and people associated with theatre are working hard to revive and preserve this form of performing arts to attract more people towards it. It's really a good self that we got the chance to come here and look at our culture. In fact, at this time, we have a lot of resources. But we always stick to our phones. But this is a source that we can see our culture through our culture. Theatre is a kind of thing that we provide a lot of facilities so that we can see our past. Kashmir Valley has produced a good number of theatre artists and presently, many senior artists are helping younger generation in keeping the tradition alive. Authorities also organize several festivals in promoting the rich culture and heritage of the region through theatre. And people across India on Monday marked the 2584th birth anniversary of Lord Buddha, the founder of Buddhism, by offering special prayers and taking holy dip in rivers. The revered occasion is also celebrated as the day when Lord Buddha attained enlightenment. People from across the world gathered in the holy Indian town of Bodh Gaya and offered special prayers on the revered occasion of Buddh Purnima the birth anniversary of Lord Gautam Buddha on Monday. Buddha Purnima or Vesak, a festival that commemorates birth, enlightenment and death of Buddha is celebrated on a full moon day in May, with the festivities extending for at least a week. Scores of Buddhist monks and devotees from countries including Japan, Sri Lanka and Indonesia took part in a special prayer organized on the occasion near the Bodhi tree, where Lord Buddha attained enlightenment. आज का जो दिन में है भगवान बुद्ध ने ज्ञान प्राप्त किया और मालूम उसका जो धर्म दर्शना जो शुरू हुआ और महापुरुष बना हुआ आज बिहार का जो राज्यपाल आया हुआ है और पूरा विदेश देश से बांधे लोग और बक्त लोग आया हुआ है आज बहुत ही मतलब सुबह मंगल का दिन है Meanwhile, hundreds of Hindu devotees gathered at the banks of River Ganga in northern Haridwar and Prayagraj cities to take a holy dip on the occasion. Many people in North India believe that Gautam Buddha is an incarnation of Hindu Lord Vishnu and have a belief that bathing in the holy river on Buddha Purnima and worshipping the river gives the benefit of immense virtue. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.